Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my July wrap-up. Uh, July was an interesting month for me, as I'm sure it was for you. Uh, I have spent a lot of time questioning my sanity while watching an ungodly amount of TikTok videos, but in between those ridiculous sessions, I managed to finish not one, not two, but five books, which doesn't sound like that much. I feel like I feel like some of my months I've read like 10 plus books easily. Uh, but you know, the slump has been going away, so we're just happy I did read anything. I don't know why my bangs are... Ugh. At the end of the day, they always struggle. Uh, but the important thing is that I finished five books and I think the page count, like average, the average page count per book is about like 600 pages. So like, who am I? Look at these, they're so chunky. So um, I did start a couple other ones. I'll talk really quickly about at the end of the video, but let's just go in order that I finished them because that's what I usually do. <sighs> that's end. I have been wanting to binge read this trilogy. I haven't done that in forever, but I was looking back actually on Goodreads and I think I finished or like caught up to about six or something series so far this year. Again, who am I? Like the one year I decided to not put this as a challenge, that's when I do it well. <laughs> That says a lot about me. Uh, but this is the last book in the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. And wow, just wow. If you are a fan of very, very science heavy hard sci fi, you need to give this a shot. It is a first contact with aliens, but it's so much more than that slash. I can't really explain it because this is super complicated, but very, very interesting. Uh, definitely not, you know, a beginner friendly kind of sci-fi. I did do two, I think, uh, videos about that. So if you want to get into sci-fi, because I've been trying to make everyone read sci-fi. This was awesome. Um, a lot of people were asking me if the sexism was as bad in this one as in the first two books. No. Uh, the first two books, I was saying how the first half was really ugh, until it finally picked up. I didn't have as much of an issue with this one. It was definitely... Not the problem, although uh, you did still get that point, that quote, what was it? Happy like you just had a son. Like, I know the author is Chinese, but like at that point, we're in the future. Why, why would this still be a thing? So yeah, uh, I can't really say much more because again, it's the last book in the trilogy. I can understand why some people would have some issues with the ending. I'm kind of okay with it, to be honest. And I gave it five stars. Uh, I believe if you look back, I gave 4.5, four in this, I guess probably not do 4.5, but we're running uh, the first one in this one as a five stars because why the hell not? Uh, definitely recommend it once again. I don't think I'm gonna ever be able to find anything remotely close to this. So if you have any suggestions, please let me know because how will anything compare? I, it just so unique. I was super excited to read the next book. Uh, it is A Memory Called Empire, which a lot of people were raving about this book. This is a sci-fi that came out uh, last year and it was technically part of the Goodreads reading challenge, but not really. It was just like one of the newest books that came out that some people voted for. So it was like maybe like number 10 on that list. I was hoping I would have time to get around to it just because a lot of people that I do follow ended up giving it like a really high rating and I was excited and I don't know what happened, but I felt so underwhelmed. Um, the concept is interesting. It's kind of a like very political, intrigued, heavy murder mystery maybe? That's like the wrong way of describing it. But you have this person that is sent to this planet and they have to figure out, more like they decide to try and figure out what happened with uh, the person that they're like replacing. It was interesting to see this ambassador kind of uh, being confronted between the two cultures and um, see how they would adapt slash again, try to figure out what happened with the person they're replacing. And it was overall okay, just that for some reason I never connected with any of the characters. I did go back and forth with the audiobook, which not a bad idea just because so many of the names are so complicated that hearing them out loud really helped whenever I went back to reading the physical book. Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of just, I don't know, I have really no strong feelings. Even like towards the end, you know, when things finally start really picking up and happening, I'm like, okay. So uh, I think I'm giving it the three stars, which is kind of low, but I have like very little to say about it. I feel like that, that's the case for this month. It's one extreme or the other. I either love the book or I'm just like, meh. Would love to hear what other people thought though. If you really loved it, please, well, explain to me. But I feel like if you are more someone that is into like political intrigue and like, it's almost like a slice of life in like political intrigue in a sci-fi, you know what I mean? And I love sci-fi, but the rest I just didn't really, I don't know. I don't know what happened basically. 
Uh, a little similar with this one, um, The Unseen World by Liz Moore. I have had this book on my shelf for the longest time and was trying to pick up a new book to read. I did actually, again, go back and forth with the audiobook. I mean, it's a team this year. I've just not been very good at sitting down and reading books, although the next one I did read the physical book only. But I've still been trying to read the books on my shelf, so that's why I just pick up one that I have on my shelf, try to get the audiobook so I can just feel accomplished, which happened with this one. Uh, this is a literary fiction, I think it's considered. You found this little girl that uh, grows up with a dad that is more of an intellectual, I guess, and um, she just has not really a normal childhood, but she's very smart, so is her dad. And um, there's kind of a mystery in there too because her dad starts uh, dealing with uh, is it dementia or Alzheimer? I don't remember. I don't know why I don't remember, but basically his mind begins to falters and um, he, leaves her, he leaves her kind of a, one last puzzle and she uh, kind of spends her life trying to figure it out, trying to find out who her dad is and everything. And yeah, it was not bad. Uh, I really did like the childhood part, but for some reason I didn't really connect with most of the rest slash I hated the romance towards the end which wasn't super like romantic so if that's an issue for you you know don't don't be scared uh but I just really wasn't happy with what happened I'm gonna leave it very vague but yes uh, I like the beginning didn't really care with where it ended so again I think I'm gonna give it a three stars not bad just didn't really connect with the story the moment we have all been waiting for I have finished the Way of Kings by Brendan Sanderson. Wow, only took me, what, two, three months? <laughs> uh, this is 1,000 pages. I finished it. I read only the physical book. I actually didn't have the audiobook. Apparently it's actually really good, so if you are someone that likes audiobooks, that's definitely not a bad way of going through it. I loved it. Uh, I have been warned though, and I'm taking the time to warn all of you right now. This is going to be a 10 book series. So keep in mind that the first book, there's a lot of time that is spent just, you know, with the world building, you know, familiarize us with, again, the world, the magic system, political system and all that stuff. Uh, you do follow mainly three characters, three storyline that you're following for now, at least in this first book. I believe each book you're following someone else like specifically, uh, I absolutely adore the characters, especially, uh, I'm gonna pronounce it French because why not, Caladin. Uh, I can understand why everyone was always talking about him like, ooh, because I get it now. Uh, the magic system is super interesting. I don't want to say too much because honestly, I feel like you benefit from going into it pretty blind. But yes, uh, it is pretty slow, but again, it's a very, very thick book. And things, obviously, as always, with Brendan Sanderson pick up towards the end. I always try to remind people that is Forte or... I don't know why it came out so weird, Forte. Uh, is Forte our world building, world building, magic system, and uh, the endings, which is the case here. Usually the main complaints you will hear is that the characters are more like 2D and uh, the writing is not super flowery, some people are bothered by that. I do feel like the characters are actually pretty good in here. Like I had no complaints with it, so five stars, love it. Need to continue the series. I know the fourth book is coming out this fall, but I think I'm gonna take August off and I will start again book two like in September. I am not in a rush to just binge read the whole thing because once again, it's going to be 10 books. Although I believe it's like two, five books. We're getting very technical here. But yes, I uh, absolutely adore it. I can't wait to see where this is going to go. I feel like there are so many intrigues, so many possibilities, and I'm just, five stars, guys, five stars. <laughs> Last but not least, uh, another book that I picked up, the audiobook, because I had a physical book on my shelf, slash I have had this book on my shelf for the longest time, and I just never picked it up. The Book Thief, which I've heard everyone talk about and rave about this book for literally years and I had so so expectations just because this is historical fiction World War II and I feel like it's not really my cup of tea slash they're always so sad that eventually I'm just like I can't do it anymore and I feel like sometimes I'm really disappointed by them so I just like I'm always nervous because you feel kind of awful saying oh it wasn't that great <laughs> especially if everyone is loving it uh on the bright side the positive about this book uh the narrator is actually death which awesome premise if you have any recommendations actually please let me know would love to read more because this ended up being fairly disappointing to me uh another good thing that i found was the main uh female character and her dad relationship uh that was nice but that's like it 
it's once again a very character driven uh, slice of life type of story and I feel like I've read so many and obviously I like that the main character likes books I feel like we can all connect to that but I just I I don't know I kind of had to force myself to finish it uh, it wasn't anything that will you know stick with me forever and uh, I know so many people love it but I just once again didn't really connect with the story I don't know if it's like the whole quarantine the whole like thing that's making me even more like don't care uh, but it's just I didn't even have high expectations I just I have no emotions like I'm not feeling emotionally attached to this story or this book so Super quickly going to mention the books I'm currently uh, reading slash I'll mention them quickly also I guess in my August TBR so I just want to mention my thoughts so far on them. The first one, probably the one that most people will want to hear something about. This is The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. This is the first book in the, the Ice uh, series which is in the same universe of uh, the Ancestor trilogy. I am a hundred, no, 213 pages into it so I have like 150 pages-ish left and so far I'm not really feeling it so that's kind of disappointing. This is happening technically before the Ancestor trilogy and I don't know if you have read it please let me know if it gets better. I will obviously still finish it. Uh, it's very easy to go through this but I'm not really feeling it so far. Uh, I just posted my vlog uh, for reading. Please tell me it wasn't like that. I swear to mm, the book gods. Um, my camera, my lens, is always focusing on every single face except mine. Either Emily, which is, she's wearing her beret, beret, beret uh, for the last video, and now it was focusing on this thing. So I'm gonna be here now. Um, so I just posted my French uh, reading classic vlog, and I was attempting to read, well, Candide by Voltaire, which um, we didn't have that. And I also started reading part two of Le Comte de Monte Cristo by Alexandre Dumas, which we'll have to work on that um, <laughs> in August. But yes, I am loving this so far. No surprise here. It's great. It's in French, but it's not that complicated, honestly. I have a feeling this is probably going to be five stars, but you know. And then uh, the one I'm currently listening to as an audiobook, last book in the Farseer trilogy, which is the first series in this world by Robin Hobb. Uh, this is Assassin's Quest and this is a big boy. Uh, it's over 800 pages. I think the audiobook is like 37 hours. So um, realistically, it will be returned to the library. Hopefully, we'll be able to get my hands on it before the end of the month and maybe be able to finish it in August. But what's the best book you've read in July? Please let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know if you have read any of the books that I mentioned, your thoughts on them because it's obviously the most fun part for me to read the comments and just interact with you. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out and let's say, oh my gosh, stupid book. Uh, let's say goodbye to Emily's hat, Behe, because July is officially done. I've had that stupid TikTok song stuck in my head literally last week. Me time, zoo, 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 zoo. Why? Why?